Hi, everybody. This is Craig Hardesty, and I want to welcome all of you to Out on Films in Conversations with series. And today, I am thrilled to have director Sharon Rocky Rogio um, and her new film, 1946, The Mistranslation That Shifted Culture. So, Rocky, welcome to Out on Film. Thank you. Yeah, this is my new film. This is my directorial debut, and I'm so excited to be with Out on Film. Jeffrey Winter of the Film Collaborative has been bragging about y'all all year, <laughs> and your lineup looks amazing. And so I'm thrilled, and I'm thrilled that I'm going to be able to join y'all in person so we yes. can meet in person. It's going to be so fun. Absolutely. It's going to be great. So your directorial debut, and you just pick a little tiny subject. <laughs> yeah, I think a little. <laughs> um, so, so tell us, how is it that you came to tell this story now? Sure. So uh, m I am a lesbian, surprise, out on film, and I happen to have grown up in an evangelical church. My dad is a non-denominational minister, and so my entire life I have been trying to figure out where I fit in. What does this mean? Oh, I'm gay. That's what all these things were my whole life, but that doesn't really fit in with my social circle. And so this conflict that isn't really unique to me, but is my unique story right. has right. been with me my entire life. And I have always wanted to try to find a way to affirm my existence with my community, with my family. And the only way to really communicate with them is through the Bible. So I found myself as an adult in Los Angeles going to Bible studies. I mean, like, and, but, you know, some of the studies that I was getting into were just different than the evangelical world and sure. afforded me an opportunity to really think and challenge and see a bigger issue that seeps into our culture that stems within our church buildings. And what I really noticed is, you know, the people who are hurting us, our mostly our oppressors are our loved ones. Right. So and they're, in my opinion, some of them are victims of this of bad theology, just like we are. And sure. so, you know, wanting to really tackle this issue, I discovered Kathy and Ed, who were the ones who yeah. asked the question before me, who put the word homosexual in the Bible and why? And then this amazing story unraveled, not only with Kathy and Ed, who are the researchers who have their own journey, which really were the forefront of the film until my dad showed up. Right. Uh, and then the man who wrote the letter in 1959, who challenged the translation committee. So for me, as a queer person growing up in the church, but also a filmmaker, I felt that it would have been irresponsible of me not to make this movie, because I believe that not only the Bible is the most published book in the world, sure. whether even Christianity or the Bible or God or not, it impacts you. And we see how that plays out in our reality today. So I felt it really important. And one thing that separates our film from other amazing works out there that have tried to tackle homophobia in the church is we answer the question, how did we even get our English Bibles that we have today? You know? Right. <laughs> so, uh, Craig, I quit my job. I started investing <laughs> like $42,000 of my own money in the first year. I must be insane. <laughs> Later, we premiered at Doc NYC. We won the Audience Award, and we've been winning Audience Awards across the country, premiering at BFI in London, can you believe right. it, and making an impact on audiences that proves that there is a need for this kind of work, that people are hungry for a tool to be able to talk with their own family members, and I'm just so proud that I have stumbled onto this, I guess, uh, mission, yeah. or what do you call it? What do you call it when you find your, you know, your calling? Right. Um, it's a calling yeah so i don't know it just happened craig yeah. and <laughs> so one of the things you know i don't feel we're in the south and you know we love us some jesus and some church um <laughs> so one of the things you know i know there there is a you know the the, the journey of kathy and ed and, and we can talk about about how they come to uh, their journey as researchers and everything but I want to just start with a choice that you made in the film, which is to get very personal with you and your dad, which I think for queer audiences and our festival who are going to be watching this film streaming and in the theater, it's really going to resonate. 
Um, we've all, I sat there and watched it and you just feel like, yeah, I've had this conversation. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I think for queer audiences, I think there's going, there is, you, you see and have experienced this conversation in some form. What, what made you decide to incorporate your very personal story into this as well? Well, so that was kind of an accident too. Although as we <laughs> with some of the footage earlier in, uh, in the middle of the film, I had unknowingly been making this movie my entire life. When I first challenged my dad back in my mid thirties and we had a public kind of talking about LGBTQ people. Mm -hmm. and um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry, I lost Just, track. What, that's okay. Just you, you, choosing to, to incorporate your personal story yeah. with your dad in, into this cool. film. So we were first trying to find other uh, people that we could examine, that we could showcase, you know, show how this mistranslation impacts our real reality. Right. And we interviewed a couple different storylines and there's some heartbreaking stories out there that are all sure. familiar. But once my dad showed up, it brought us into a different world. It gave us a different lens. It afforded us an opportunity for me to narrate. And then right. with the footage that we were able to find and get with Fox and NBC, which was very expensive, uh, but <laughs> it just kind of fell together. And so once my dad signed the release form, that ended up being the stronger storyline. And mm -hmm. it really does resonate and so for me as the filmmaker i had to make a decision to revisit some of those painful conversations right. because i knew what my dad was going to say i've had those conversations before and as much as we are planting seeds and one of the reasons why we wanted to put my dad in and, and we were a really prime example of showcasing that we're not going to change everybody's mind and that's okay right. How do we handle conversation? How do we handle relationship? How do we handle growth? And my dad has changed from believing that all gay people will not inherit the kingdom of God to right. well, you might be born gay, but, you know, but there's still a butt on it and sure. it's working, you know? And so, but it was a really important storyline for us to not give us a Hollywood ending, to make it so right. real, it has a hopeful ending, you know? And at the end of the movie, my dad and I can hug each other and, try to have a chuckle and go to Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> and so it was really just important. So again, it just kind of happened with allowing us to let the movie breathe, be open with sharing our own vulnerability. Because for me, I made this movie so I can heal myself and my family. And I believe that the information is powerful enough to heal others and yeah. to start engaging in bigger conversations around this issue, whether you're going to shift or not, you know? Right. <laughs> So, well, and in the end, it shows that there is grace to be had. Correct. In yeah. in families where some families may not think there is. Right. And on both sides, and yes. you know, so I always say though too, when people see me with my dad, they're like, "I can never do that," and it's so painful. So my advice is, if you want to be in relationship, the of uh, you know, not obvious, but make sure that you know your boundaries, you set your boundaries. Yeah party knows the boundaries you're in a safe place you've talked it out with people just wanted to put that out there as well too for anybody who might be watching and struggling with this you know find that safety net get get your boundary set and then if you can do it be in relationship and 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 taking that one step further to show how people can change um uh, you also highlight um kathy valdick's story of how a straight woman very conservative Christian of her journey um, to embark on this research and looking at this through her relationship with Nero Montoyo, which shows an evolution of being open to having conversations with grace, with love, with understanding. It did change her worldview. 
Correct. And that's, again, yeah, one of the key through lines of the film. And it did start with Kathy and Neto's relationship and Kathy not trying to evangelize a lesbian woman, person of color to change her to be and fit into this mold that her evangelical church told her everybody needs to fit into. And so just did relationship. Uh, and much like when we see in our culture misunderstandings of even, for example, Christians and Muslims, Muslims are right. good people. Christians are good people. We need to talk to each other because and be neighbor and neighborly to each other. And then once you're in relationship, you find out we all put our pants on the same way, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't know. Some of us might do two legs at a time. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to get into that all that, but yeah. <laughs> in relationship with one another and don't be afraid to you know and it's, it's the same now with the trans community which has a huge target on their back how many, right. how many of the people who are really targeting this community are no trans person that they know right. of you know uh and so i encourage people to really seek out relationship with one another yeah anyway thank you for seeing that through line in the film i mean it it's just it's a beautiful through line and i think it is one of the things having seen Lots of films and documentaries that examine, you, you know, the queer community and religion. It is a through line that that I think is very helpful for people to experience and, and to see how how both of these can play out and evolve over time and, and throughout. Um, so, I, as you're making this film and you're working with Ed and Kathy and you're going through this journey, what was the most surprising thing to you? where you were just like, I, I can't believe this. <laughs> um, well, you know, there were a lot of things. I think when we found the Jerry Falwell tapes and really watched those tapes, that was really heartbreaking to see the lies that came from a community that's supposed to be following Jesus and see the damage that had been done Uh and again, we, you know, I, I mentioned in the film that I was too young and really just too sheltered to realize how we were being politicized. And so in doing all the research, that was really heartbreaking to see. Uh, and so we really wanted to make a film as much as we're, that's so frustrating and there's so much anger and, you know, around that issue. We really didn't want to vilify anyone. We didn't want to vilify the people who fell into that. and believed it, you know, and are still being propagated in certain ways. Right. Anyway. And, and it is one of the things I think is very successful about the film is that you don't villainize anybody. Yeah. This is presented as a group of white guys in a room made a mistake. <laughs> they, and they, they mistranslate it and we've all suffered, yes, and you don't gloss over that, but there's also treating this with grace um, and an understanding that maybe there aren't villains here. Maybe we can just use this as a stepping stone to move in a different direction. And then pointing out who the villains are, you know, we, yeah. we know who, who abused yes. people, the Bible and other such things for political power and gain. It's all about power and structure. Right. And so, you know, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And so I'm, I'm hope that people will uh, go on that journey to start pulling back those layers. Another thing that surprised me was the cost of technical post-production and how <laughs> I really underestimated that, that leg. Uh, it's so difficult. It was so difficult to get through, but we, we got through it and we're still going to do a final DCP before we do our, um, just to update some music and some credits and things like that, but it'll be like our fifth. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, filmmaking isn't easy. And I had to learn on my own being my first film. And, yeah. and you know, and you see all the names in the credits of the film, all the donors yeah. that this is all donation based and anything that we couldn't pay for, which was very little I had to do, you know, and so trying right. to figure out how, to, how to navigate that uh, was really tricky, but but yeah, I'm so glad and I learned so much. And again, the audiences are, are really responding to the work. And I hope that we can see a ripple effect of, the, you know, because we did, we made this to provide a tool for people. It's a, it's a tool to have a conversation. And one of the things that has struck me 
Um, and, and kind of as, as we've screened this film and wanted it in the festival and kind of looked around at kind of what people are saying about it, I, I was struck by uh, the number of people who were very critical of the film before it even came out and had a chance to see it had already decided. <laughs> uh, and, and so there is still this kind of, you know, thing about just clinging onto this belief, um, no matter what. And I think that I, it shouldn't surprise me, but it kind of, I was like, you could just wait until it came out and actually. There's so good you know, Quoting yeah. us, writing books. Somebody wrote a whole book about our movie. They haven't even seen it. Right. <laughs> so. so what do you attribute that to? Is it, do you think that's just, we just cling to this because this is the belief that we've had for so long? Part of that, it's also a part of it is, you know, once you've been saying something for so long, like this is generational, it's hard to unsay, right. you built your whole world around it. Right. Um, a lot of it is uh, built in internal homophobia and just the, all of these still these misinformation that is penetrated, no pun or pun intended, right. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um and so also fear fear of the unknown uh sure. but you also believe and i know and some of the other research we're doing for another film which i won't talk to you about right now later but maybe another time um uh we can see how some conservative right-wing groups like the moral majority are the ones who are pumping out the misinformation and disinformation on facebook and instagram and propagating and really dividing us it's a deliberate right. A deliberate attack and now on the left and the right there are you know extremes i get that but sure roe wasn't an accident that was a right. calculated plan and these groups have been they're organized too yeah. and so we want to again present these themes with grace and understanding so people can just take a step back and be like uh-huh oh and then start to see other things of this is about systematic oppression, institutional oppression. And this is about political abuse of power of, of, and abusing people and abusing the Bible. And this is just one issue with the LGBTQ community and a long list of issues that right. fund and use to this power structure for not good. And, and on the flip side of that, the audiences who are seeing it, the people who are experiencing the film and are reacting just uh, kind of over the moon about either like finally or relief or kind of what's your experience with the audiences who, at, who have actually sat through the film and, and experienced it? Yeah, it's been overwhelming to see the response from a lot of different people. We haven't seen too many uh, conservatives, but there are conservative people or evangelical upbringings, people who are still kind of that head in the heart are not aligning. And right. we've dozens of stories of people coming up just like in tears. So just wow. Or I've always known or I felt and or one woman in the Bahamas at the Q&A said, I have a gay brother and I have been doing this wrong. I really need to look at this whole thing. And uh, so it's just powerful to see straight cis people say, oh, wow, you know, this that was really powerful uh, and watch the whole thing, which is great. Uh, <laughs> and, and people are bringing their parents, which is so cool, you know, yeah. and they're talking about it together. They're having uh, watch parties all across the United States and really talking about it. It's really cool. And then for the LGBTQ side, people who have maybe uh, grew up in the church and still kind of think it's a sin in the back of their head, but have gotten into a, a queer relationship. They feel comfortable in their life. They affirm their life, but always still feel kind of that deep shame have said things like, I never even imagined that it wasn't a sin. And so those... Right formative stories of just levity and and freedom and all that shame that is just disintegrating is really powerful and so cool to see yeah. i'm so proud to be a part of so if y'all have any stories after you see the film please let us know send us an email okay. send us a video put it on tiktok sure. that would be super helpful uh because your stories really inspire me so much and it's so cool to see the film, you know, doing the thing that we wanted to do.
Yeah, it was one of the things that as, as I experienced it when, when I was watching it. And it, you know, for, you know, using, weaponizing the Bible in this way and religion in this way, and it is for political power and, and political gain, but it has been so destructive to families, Christian and non-Christian. I mean, you know, I know, all of our queer audiences know, this has ripped families apart for, for generations now. And it seems like, or at least my hope um, with the audience, both queer and, and straight and cisgender and trans, that it almost gives us permission to talk about this in a different way rather than stay on this road that has been so destructive to so many of our families in so many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I, and I will say that that's my hope. My hope is that we have more Kathy's and Neto's that, that, that just form this kind of serendipitous <laughs> relationship <laughs> that changes both of them. Yeah. You know, and so um, anyone who struggles theologically, there's a group, there's a group called, uh, it's called Unconditional. It's, there's a conference going on this, the same weekend, actually, I'm going to go for okay. one. Uh, that's why I'm coming in a day early. And okay. the group started by Greg and Lynn McDonald wrote a book called Embracing the Journey, and they have a gay son, and they're super evangelical church. They're in a uh, a church down there that's quite large in Atlanta. <clears throat> but their whole thing is, you know, we're done with the theological debate. At the end of the day, we're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to, you know, right. love, love our neighbor like ourselves. And how do we love better? You know, we're talking about our children here. We're talking about our, our loved right. ones, you know, and as I mentioned earlier, we're talking about, and even in this country, people who have different religious beliefs. And so sure. we need to love them too. You know, we need to welcome all of our neighbors, our Jewish neighbors, our Muslim neighbors, our trans neighbors, all of them are welcome at the table. And so that's one of the things that we really want to start expressing as well. And not just like, well, the Bible says this, uh, we right. need to be really clear on the data over dogma issue, but at right. the end, how are we loving people and how are we loving people better, you know, and, and right. pulling from that dogma that actually causes harm in our society right being being open to having open eyes to see that right and now being able hopefully to talk about that in a different way yeah um, yeah which i think is in the end i think this this film winds up being so optimistic and hopeful thank you i think because of that thank you and I think that's why it's responding well with audiences. You know, right. I couldn't imagine when we first won our audience award at Doc MIC, I was just like, what a ride. Like, I can't even believe we got we were nominated for a jury prize. We were in the U.S. competition. It's an Oscar qualifying festival. I'm like, what is happening? You know, like this is just, <laughs> is, is difficult, you know? And so Jeffrey, again, uh, put the this list of fabulous festivals that we have an honor of, of playing at, uh, including y'all's. And so, but the list then after that is just like, and then, and it's just so cool. I never imagined in my wildest dreams that we would be on this road. And uh, we've got some plans for the end of the year. We got some plans for distribution. We're still okay, working good. on finding that right sales agent and that right partner. Sure, if, yeah. I had to plug that if you don't mind. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the things that's, you know, before, before we wrap up, I, I did want to talk about because it is an interesting journey as a viewer, as, as, as kind of somebody, you know, going through the film and, and as you all have taken this journey together, the choice of focusing on Kathy, um, you know, and for us as, as queer people and, and gay people coming in and out of, of church and everything, I, I'm just going to be perfectly frank. My first reaction is, oh my God, she picked a straight cisgender woman and is doing this why. And I was kind of mad in the beginning. And I'm like, oh, but she's delightful. Yeah. And she's made this conversion. We're well, not really a conversion, but she's just evolved over this. And she kind of changes us in a little in some ways, <laughs> in our views of what we see as conservative Christian people. Yeah. So even she's a catalyst for us, I think. <laughs> she oh. brought me along by the end, and I'm a hard one to get. <laughs> oh, good. No, that's great. No, she's she's got that personality for sure. Um, but she's so relatable, and she is that Christian woman that other people will yeah. relate 
to too. Um, but she's the one who did the work, you know? And yeah. so we, and another thing that's really cool is she's a woman that did the work. And so one of the things that we see yeah. this as well too, like Ed then jumped on and did the work and they went to Yale together and they discovered together and then they started right. together and all this stuff, you know? And every single time we get pushed back from anyone, sermons, podcasts, radio shows, all the things, right. Never mention Kathy by name. She's written an amazing book that is completely like the. It's got over five hundred footnotes. It's well researched. It's got this right. on HIV and AIDS that you would ever read. It's an amazing book. They don't never. They call her that woman, and instead, really? yeah. Ed, and they point to a su- suicidal ideation. And of course, he's gay, so he's already going right. to think these things it's just off oh, it's awful which almost proves our point like they're not even willing to recognize good scholarly work uh right. and so let them keep calling her that woman we're gonna keep- <laughs> and i'm going to hear that story from you craig thank you for yeah. sharing um, and i think that's the beauty of film you know, and I think it's the beauty of of art. It's the beauty of queer art. I think for us in the community, because it does provide our own journey into our own lives uh, in that same way. And I think that's you know these stories are important to tell. And I'm very glad that you chose to tell it now. Thank you. It kind of like I said, there's, it chose me. I just said yes, and I'm so happy that you all said yes, and we're going to be able to share it with the Atlanta audience. Like I said, we have been waiting. One of our scholars, Dr. Parker, is going to be in the audience. She is incredible. Wait till you in person and come and have a drink with us afterward. Or, like I said, follow us on at 1946 the movie, or you can find us at 1946themovie.com. Sign up for our newsletter. Send me an anything about the film i'd love to hear even if you don't like it i'd still love to hear (laughs) (laughs) so rocky i want to thank you for joining us for this conversation about 1946 the mistranslation that shifted culture it is an extraordinary film i i i I think that audiences um, our audience in in particular i think are going to really respond well to this Um, and i think that people are really going to come out of this with a renewed sense I think of hope and optimism, and I hope that's what it can do is be healing for lots of people and lots of families who've been affected by this. So um, we're excited to have you. So exciting. I can't wait. It can't happen soon enough. So. All right. Well, Rocky, thank you. And thank all of you for joining us in this conversation um, on Out on Film, where we celebrate our queer stories and our queer storytellers. Thank you. And we will see you at the festival.